it's time for Tucker Carlson, who Andrew now has Tate Andrew Tate is live. A former kickboxer has built up a truly enormous following on social media. Until a couple months ago, we'd never heard of him. And then the other day, virtually every tech company on the planet banned him. Not just his presence, but also his ability to conduct business on the internet. He was taken off Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, all of it. Then they started telling you that not only was he not allowed to talk, but that you weren't allowed to like him because he was an incredibly bad person. And our view on that always is we'll decide for ourselves since we're adults and Americans and we'll listen to anyone we want and we'll come to any conclusion we care to come to about what that person is about. So we sat down at some length and talked to Andrew Tate and we wanted to show you some of it so you could make up your own mind, which you're still allowed to do as far as we're concerned. Here's part of the interview. I don't really feel like I've exposed anything. Like I'm truly not a very political person. This is the first time someone's experienced this level of ban. I'm not particularly right wing. I don't vote. I mean, I obviously have my own personal views, but they didn't ban me for that. Um, they banned me simply because I had large swaths of the population agreeing to very traditional masculine values. Teenage men and young and young men, 20, 30, 22, 23, 24 were looking up to me. I think even conservative like moms didn't like what he had to say. Life. That's why he got clapped up so quick. I and a big house and, and a lot of money and a beautiful girlfriend. And they thought they thought this was very, very threatening. And for some reason, they decided that it's better if they annihilate me from the internet and replace me with somebody who's more Why did this motherfucker have a gamer chair in his bathroom, bro? Jizz to young men. Yeah, so I think that being a man is very, very difficult. I think that men's issues are largely overlooked. The people in charge of the world pretend to care, but when somebody who's champion, champion, championing men's issues like myself comes forward and finally manages to garner huge percentiles of the public support, I'm silenced. So they're not really interested in men's issues. And there's a lot of young men growing up today that feel very disaffected. They I agree with invisible. that, but he's the, the worst person for it. agendas that are being forced down their throats are not agendas they align with or they feel affinity to or agendas they want. And I basically just say to men, look, it's a very hard life. You're going to need to get up, work hard, go to the gym. Strong body is a strong mind. You're going to have to reject listening blindly to everything you're told, reject the slave mind, think for yourself, get a strong network of brothers, work aside them, don't tolerate low quality people in your life, which means don't tolerate men who just smoke drugs and play video games, or men who are disloyal or dishonest. By extension, don't tolerate women or girlfriends who are disloyal or dishonest. My man, literally. And try and build oh, and dude, a this is so cool. This is the funniest backpedal I've ever the programming seen. Programming that the Matrix tries to infl uh, influence you with and grow up truly happy. And what happens is when I say these things, they ignore 95% of what I say. They ignore me saying that you need to avoid low quality men. He went and they from take the bit where I say he went from Aiden Ross to Tucker Carlson talking about talking about video games. And then they put it games. on a, a reel, a very short three or four second clip. And then they say I'm a misogynistic person and I'm dangerous to women and I need to be banned. The problem is that the majority of young men in the world today are completely invisible. And social media has made them invisible. If you go into an Instagram feed, you have extremely beautiful women, which is fine. That's what? They're beautiful. They're allowed to take pictures. But the only men who have followers are men with massive social status, right? Men with Ferraris and money or rappers or people who have YouTube channels, interesting people. If you're a normal man with a normal job, you don't really exist in the online world. It's very difficult Wait, to get followers. So are, same with women, what the you Don't really matter. You don't have access to the sexual marketplace. It's very difficult for you to even get any kind of recognition that you're even alive. And a lot of men feel Bro, I think this dude love. hangs out with so many Instagram women that he forgot that like real women exist without like massive social that media following. Perhaps, but that's the way the game works. You need to become a man of importance. You need to become a man of influence or you're going to suffer the pain of being invisible forever. Here is how you do it. I wasn't trying to change the rules of the game. I was just telling the men how to win because I came from nothing and I'm completely and utterly self-made. And... I think the reason a lot of men Bro, are he will so he will never pop they off. Invisible. They feel like I'm calling it. He will life, never pop off like this. Hard. Women expect me to be He's he's too cowardly. And funny and he tamped down. He genuinely brought the rhetoric well down so funny, much. And, That's and not why he popped off. He popped off because he was easy to consume and understand and said ridiculous shit. 
And at the same time, all these social media platforms pretend to care. Nah, this is as just boring. Now you're just a bald dude in his bathroom issues, they crying about being f***ing a band off social media. Which shows have absolutely no care for the young men of the world today. They think that by banning me, I'm just going to vanish and the young men are just going to go and start eating the gruel that they're fed on their on their YouTube feed. They don't want to read. They don't want to see transgender people wear makeup. They don't want to see that. They, they want to see a man who has a bunch of money and a nice life and some what? nice cars and is strong and is confident. They want an action hero. And that's something that large portions of the world still want to be. And, and YouTube and, and social media platforms obviously just don't like the idea of that. They want to get rid of me and try and replace me with something they see as far more malleable, trying to create people which are more malleable and more easy to program and more easy to control. So news accounts in the United States say that the U.S. Embassy in Bucharest, Romania, was tipped off to your misdeeds and alerted the local authorities you might be committing human trafficking. Um, given that this is the same charge they leveled against Julian Assange or a species of it, you know, skeptical, but I, I want to know the details. Were you arrested for human yeah, trafficking? Yeah, he's just, what, he's a, what happened? He's a truth teller yeah, like Julian Assange. It is. I suffered from a case of swatting. It's very popular with people who are large on the internet. Many large YouTubers have been swatted. It's where you call the police and you say somebody has a gun or there's a That's hostage situation the and the same. SWAT team arrives. No, it's not. Somebody made because it doesn't make sense national news or international news when you get swatted because there is no actual legal charge associated along on top of it the world i have absolute respect for the police i would hate to live in a country where if you call the police saying women are being held against their will that the police don't respond that would be terrible of course they should come and look absolutely they turned up they investigated they realized that nobody was in the house against their will there was no crime committed they said okay you're not a suspect but you are a witness to this, along with me, my brother, the housekeeper, uh, the gardener. Everybody who was in the premises at the time was labeled a witness. We had to go to the police station for 45 minutes for pieces of paper. I'm telling you, he's too we boring. We filled them in and we were let go. This I is too. Swatted. This is this. Nobody this is not what popped him off. No what popped him off was saying no dumb shit. And if he does this, if he speaks like this, like a like a little neutered cat, no one is gonna no one's gonna clip this. You can't clip this and put this on TikTok. COVID. So sum up for us, if you would, what you think the response... What you can clip and put on TikTok is what he actually said about why he went to Romania, which is like, you know, it, because he can do Me Too stuff there. So I certainly made the mag of my views on COVID. I don't want to go to conspiracy theory, and I would also never kill myself. Let me just say that here for, for, for the record. <laughs> but okay. at the time of COVID, at the time of COVID first being announced... My brother and I decided to, we sat and had a very logical conversation and we sat and said, we're too young fighting age males. If COVID can kill us, then the world is over. It's zombie apocalypse time. So there's no point hiding. We may as well go out with a bang. So my brother and I flew to Stockholm, Sweden. Now, I don't know if many people know this, but Sweden never closed down. Stockholm and Sweden at never closed down, never made you wear masks, never mandated the vaccine. At the very beginning of COVID, when the rules were strictest, when Florida was still closed, when Miami was still closed, when the Republican states were still closed, Stockholm, Sweden was wide open with full nightclubs and a party scene like you've never seen. And we lived in Sweden for three solid months with zero restrictions, zero worry or interest in COVID. It was like the world was completely normal. And from there, when we left, obviously COVID was still going on and in a neighboring country, you go to Germany and they were having full panic attacks, genuine panic attacks if you didn't have a mask on. And it was just very obvious to me. I was like, I've spent the last three months ignoring this and I'm fine. And now I'm in Germany surrounded by panic attacks. Wait, and, and didn't this mother literally give Michaela Peterson COVID who then gave it to Jordan Peterson or was that Michaela's next uh, boyfriend? The decimation of your income, the fact you can't go get a doctor's appointment for a genuine ailment. It wasn't or a genuine him, right? It was, cancer, it, it, it was the other one, right? Or was it him? The fact you can't see your loved ones in their final days. These things uh, it was are far guy. more destructive than the common cold. I think that what they're doing is, is unfair. I think it's a massive overreaction. And this is based on my personal experience. And I think at the time, there was a lot of pushback, but I would See, like to think- See, the COVID narrative about like, oh, the numbers are fake or whatever is totally boring. Right. Like it's, it's, you know, already, it's already old school. You know what I mean? COVID, I used to say to my brother, 
how will people struggle with the cognitive dissonance when people have mostly checked over? out of like the COVID because thing most COVID normies are like there. yeah all right we're Nothing living our lives now away. you know what i mean we had to the do what we had we to do all hiding from is still right there out there to get you but now everyone walks around and they're not scared of it anymore and i'm like are people critical enough to analyze themselves and say, for a year of my life, I was deathly afraid of something. Now I'm exposing myself to said thing and I'm not afraid anymore. The media tricked me and I was a fool, but they're not. They're, they don't even seem to self-analyze and go, I got tricked. They're just like, oh, okay, next thing. Hey, Andrew now, like robots. It's, it's mind bending to me, truly. I don't know if so he knows I, this, I but uh, something crazy happened. It's called vaccines, which he's against, I think. And also even Paxlovid and like numerous treatments uh, came out, which greatly reduced the number of casualties of COVID. Yeah, so the story was very simple. Even though in the United States of America, more than a million people died, which I guess is not that important. Uh, air carriers is only low cost primarily. There's not much first class, business class, anything like that. And I was flying. And my experience was plagued by endless paperwork, wearing a mask, put the mask over your nose. Every time you eat, you have to put the mask on in between. Uh, I got told off for not having the mask up high enough. I got told off for drinking too long because my mask wasn't on. Pure panic and chaos. And because I'm fortunate enough to be fiscally secure from there, I decided I'll just buy private jets from now on. And when I bought a private jet, there was no masks, no paperwork. No mask at the airport when I landed. My air stewardess was not wearing a mask. My pilot was not wearing a mask. COVID didn't exist once I bought a private jet. Very interesting. Um, I, maybe if you're rich enough, COVID can't take, maybe COVID's scared of money. I'm not sure. But it seems that everyone who's flying on private jets never had to worry about COVID ever. It's just the people at the bottom. Wait, what? Yeah, no shit, bro. What the f Yeah, because, because you're... You're around literally one other person that's also tested. What? Are only the rules for a certain class of people. My man literally said, I self-isolated in my private jet. And for some reason, I didn't get COVID while flying. Yeah, it, a luxury afforded to everyone. We to make a joke of it. But when I would fly on a private jet and do whatever I wanted or go to Sweden and party in nightclubs and do whatever I wanted. And then I'd come to, let's say, England and see my friend who couldn't go see his dying grandmother because of a COVID restriction. That's truly sad. That's truly criminal. I don't, I, it's really crazy what's happened and how the world's just moved on and the cognitive dissonance that people don't have enough respect for themselves and for the truth to analyze how they were so easily fooled. It, it's really sad to even think about, but maybe that was the beginning of me being disliked by just pointing out my human experiences during the, the pandemic. But I wanna tell you something that's, that's actually kind of scary about this banning. It all came so hard and so fast that I don't know if they all just follow each other. I don't know if they're all influenced by each other. I don't know if there's someone above them all. I don't know. But when they go to cancel you, ladies and gentlemen, it comes hard and fast. You lose your Facebook, then your Instagram, then your Gmail, then your Discord, then your website hosting, then your domain name, like then your payment processor, then your bank. That like, it's just like in real time, you're watching your phone and apps just exploding. Boom, boom, boom. It's, it's crazy. That's it. Andrew Tate, you don't have to agree with everything a man says to believe he has a right to speak in public. And we do believe that. No one gets to tell you who you can watch. No one gets to tell you what you have to think. No one gets to tell you who you have to hate. You're an American and an adult. You can make those decisions yourself. So why don't they want you to hear from Andrew Tate? They really think he's a worse influence on the youth than, say, Cardi B. Tell us how. They're telling us he's a criminal. Okay. Has he been charged? Who are the victims? What are their names? It's going to take a lot more than that to have us believe he should be canceled. Or anyone else, by the way. We're against censorship Period. I'm telling you, dude. And more than anything, we're in I'm favor telling of people you, making up their own minds. He's in a minds. double bind. That it's the it's the the Trump conundrum, right? In many ways, you can never have another Trump because Trump is a media demon, right? And if someone is that level of media demon and that level sassy and that level of a narcissist, virtually everyone's being censored. The Pentagon now punishing service members for liking the wrong tweet. Okay, that's ridiculous. All right, we're done with the Andrew Tate part. Please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any...
future videos. <laughs>